Uh, we have two more keynotes to get us warmed up before we move into the panels. And the first one uh, is going to be introduced by Mayor John Heefchen. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you, Andy. Fortunately, I've Andy. had the uh, pleasure of knowing Mayor Hartwell from Grand Rapids since uh, about 2004, the year that he was elected. A little later, we were both uh, selected by the Governor Granholm to serve on, on the Climate Action Task Force for the, for the state. If they had only taken our advice, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I certainly know we worked pretty hard on that. When, it, when a call goes out uh, in Michigan or uh, probably around the country for mayors to engage in anything green, uh, Mayor Hartwell and I are the usual suspects and, and, uh, and answer that call. With 22 colleges or universities in the metropolitan area, Grand Rapids is known as a knowledge center. Medicine, medical education, and health research are the most rapidly growing economic sectors. Even during times of severe economic downturn, Grand Rapids has shown remarkable resiliency. Now serving his third term, Mayor Hartwell took office 2004, during his tenure, city government has implemented a variety of environmental measures, including the purchase of renewable resource energy, use of alternative foods, uh, fuels in city vehicles, continued attention to water quality in the Grand River, and a widespread implementation of energy conservation measures. In January 2007, the United Nations recognized Grand Rapids as a regional center of expertise in education for sustainable development. Grand Rapids is widely recognized as one of the most sustainable cities in America. In 2010, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce gave Grand Rapids the nation's most sustainable city award. And in 2012, Mayor Hartwell was given the first place climate protection award by the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Mayor Hartwell. Mayor Hefia, thank you very much. Uh, what a nice introduction, and, uh, and what an honor to be introduced by John Hefia. It, it's no uh, surprise to me that he was the first mayor in the nation uh, to sign on uh, to this pledge and this, this uh, initiative. Um, he is widely known as the greenest mayor in Michigan, and um, all the good things that I've done in Grand Rapids, I've stolen from John Heath. <laughs> so let me take care of some business first. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> King George won't need his spectacles to see that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a, a truly an honor to uh, to be with you this morning, and I uh, have a have a few minutes to, uh, to, to to what I've been asked to do is kind of set the stage with with uh, one city's experience, uh, what what we've done in Grand Rapids uh, uh, around uh, energy productivity, uh, energy efficiency, renewable energy, um, and uh, and and it's, it's it's truly an honor to be here to to do that. Uh, when I took office in 2004, we began doing sustainability planning. We set aside the old strategic planning model, uh, and we began doing sustainability planning. That meant, means that every single uh, department has uh, uh, not only its, its sort of natural goals, economic development, having economic measures, but, uh, but every department has uh, triple bottom line uh, goals that, they, that they, they, they must establish, they must measure, uh, they must report, uh, and that's been a a really an important piece, I think, of, of our um, uh, uh, successes in Grand Rapids is to use uh, sustainability uh, planning. Um, uh, it, of course, as part of that, uh, energy utilization, uh, uh, energy efficiency uh, has been part of our what we strive to do. Um, and so let me uh, start with, with this, um, with this uh, statement. <clears throat> Um, which, which I was crafted for this morning to, to achieve the biggest energy efficient, uh, biggest energy productivity, and to integrate it into sustainability goals. Grand Rapids took a strategic triple bottom line approach to energy efficiency. So, 
Um, we recognize that, uh, that energy efficiency is a good thing for our organization. We're saving money in doing that. Uh, we're, we're a more, and because, because uh, uh, our sources of revenue are uh, tax revenues, uh, in our case, uh, income tax, property tax, and some fee income, um, it becomes uh, critically important, uh, especially if you uh, wish to be reelected, uh, to, uh, to make sure that you're making absolute best use of those uh, tax resources. So uh, the economic benefits uh, of conserving precious uh, uh, energy resources are, are, are obvious. Environmental impacts uh, may be equally obvious uh, as, as we recognize that uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions uh, makes us a, a uh, 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 while a very small part of the global picture, uh, uh, at least rep represents our city doing our part in moving our, our, our globe ahead. You know, I get a chance from time to time to address some international audiences, and, and they're often uh, critical of the United States and, and our, the very fact that we don't even have a national energy policy and that we, uh, that uh, George Bush, uh, 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 the second block, uh, the um, ratification of Kyoto Protocols. And, and, but then I tell that, those audiences that, that there are now over 1,050 cities in America. John, you were probably the first to sign this one too. 1,050 cities that have signed a climate protection agreement, uh, a U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement, where we bind ourselves to the very same um, uh, measures, the very same objectives uh, of, the, uh, of Kyoto in terms of greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction. So in the, the environment, clearly a, a key element, uh, but then m maybe less obviously is social equity. And, uh, and when I talk about social equity, I'm, I'm talking about human health uh, and the benefits of human health by, by turning from, from uh, uh, fossil fuel generated electrical power to renewable power, uh, by cutting back on our, our use through efficiency, uh, cutting back on the use of, of uh, 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 fossil fuel generated power. Um, but also the jobs that are created. Uh, one of the, you'll remember one of the yeah. centerpieces of our 25 by 25 campaign here in Michigan, uh, which uh, unfortunately was not a successful campaign, was about jobs creation and, and, and providing a good opportunities for people to work in the uh, energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy environment. We have, uh, we, we have these uh, uh, guiding plans and strategies that are driving our work in Grand Rapids. So we began with a greenhouse gas emission report in which we measured the impact of municipal government first of all, and then our, uh, our, our, our uh, uh, city geographically uh, uh, secondly, and, and, and measured greenhouse gases, set the baseline so that we could begin to look for uh, uh, strategies then and implement strategies to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Uh, uh, we developed the next day an energy efficiency and Safe conservation uh, strategy, which drives all of our work within um, City Hall. And I'll talk a little bit about what uh, some of those strategies are in just a minute. Uh, our sustainability plan, which is a, ro a rolling five-year plan now in its 2011 through 2015 uh, iteration, uh, a, 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 a five-year document with targets and measurable outcomes. Uh, if we're not, we know that if we're not measuring, uh, we're not going to achieve. Uh, and then we formed a, uh, a transformation investment plan. Um, be, uh, just to set the stage for that, because it becomes a really important part of some of the investments we're able to make. Um, we, in, two, in 2010, our citizens gave us an additional two tenths of 1% in income tax uh, uh, by popular vote. Uh, we dedicated that to three specific purposes, uh, police, fire, and, and municipal operational transformation. Uh, we made a case, uh, the, the citizens accepted it, and, uh, and, and by a, a solid margin, gave us that two-tenths of 1% uh, income tax. Um, we said for city transformation that we were going to uh, uh, make investments investments, that becomes a key word for us, uh, in, in things like energy efficiency that, that drive 
uh, costs down in the future, that, are, that create a, uh, a, an economically viable environment, which meant that uh, we look at return on investment for, for each and every one of those uh, investments that are made. We have a council that uh, evaluates them and uh, uses an ROI uh, and, 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 and rigorously adheres to this transformation investment uh, plan. Currently, uh, in, as we uh, come down, th we're through year four, or approaching the end of year four, on a five-year um, uh, sunsetted uh, income tax increase, uh, there are enough funds there uh, yet to uh, uh, retrofit our entire uh, LED uh, street lighting system, uh, an investment of approximately uh, $8 million, $8 to $9 million that will save us over $400,000 a, a year and uh, money that will be available then for other uh, municipal investments. Some key city actions, um, uh, the way we, uh, integrating energy efficiency, I mean, this is the way we organize our work. Uh, we, uh, everything that has to integrate into that uh, energy efficiency plan. Um, have dedicated outcome champions. Uh, each department has a champion for uh, its, uh, its energy objectives. Uh, the responsibility of that champion is to in, encourage, promote, uh, become part of a, of, a, of a think tank within City Hall that comes together and looks for opportunities for additional uh, energy efficiencies. Uh, uh, they're responsible for measuring uh, success in their departments, uh, individual departments, and then they're, they're responsible for reporting those out uh, as part of the larger uh, energy efficiency report that's produced annually. Uh, once again, I would cite uh, measuring progress as one of the uh, truly key elements of any plan. Whoops, there we go. I better turn around and look each time. I've been, I've been clicking but not uh, advancing. So, energy targets. Um, we had set a, a goal for, um, uh, in 2010, in our, in our first uh, sustainability plan, we'd set a goal for reducing the city's annual power util, uh, utilization to uh, 103,000 megawatts. Um, in 2007, I'd set a, or I'm sorry, 2005, I'd set a goal of uh, achieving 20% of our uh, power demand for the city from uh, renewable resource energy. Uh, we achieved that goal in 2008 uh, and uh, uh, set a new, somewhat more aggressive goal. I said we can and we will uh, generate 100% of our our. Uh, uh, our municipal demand for power from renewable resources uh, by the year 2020. Um, we are on our way toward uh, doing that. We also uh, uh, set targets for increasing energy efficiency in city facilities by uh, an additional 2% over uh, fiscal year 12 results. 2%, I don't think that's right, Harris. Uh, Harris Alabashic, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is here with me. He's our Director for Energy and Sustainability. Uh, the, the overall uh, impact that we've had with the energy efficiency investments we've made is a little over 20%, as I recall. Uh, I see, I see, thank you very much. Um, and then uh, reducing uh, uh, natural gas consumption uh, uh, again, through energy efficiency investments. So how are we doing? Uh, in 2009, uh, we were using uh, about 106,000 uh, megawatts of uh, electrical power. Uh, by 2013, we'd cut that utilization uh, to uh, just a little under 101,000 megawatts. Um, and our renewables uh, at this point stand at 25% uh, of our total portfolio with more projects planned. Two major projects that are, uh, that are at the uh, RFP stage right now is a, uh, a biodigester at our wastewater treatment plant uh, and a, a large solar project that would be a 38-acre um, uh, ballast-mounted solar uh, a project at a... At a former Superfund site, uh, a landfill that can't be otherwise developed. Um, and we're looking at a, um, 
I believe that's a, uh, it, it pencils out to something in the neighborhood of a five megawatt um, uh, uh, solar project. We've made energy improvements, something that is, uh, no, there we go. Energy improvements uh, is cl clearly to, to, to today's task. This is, uh, this is so important, uh, and, and every city can and <coughs> absolutely should be working on energy improvements. We've made energy efficiency uh, investments uh, at our municipal facilities, uh, in our, in our uh, city hall and ancillary buildings. Uh, that means window replacement, it's meant motion detectors uh, in, in offices and hallway areas. It's meant upgrading uh, light fixtures. Uh, uh, it has meant uh, LED uh, retrofitting of all of our municipal parking ramps, uh, as well as uh, geothermal at fire stations. Uh, uh, we have uh, three of our 11 stations now using uh, geothermal. I, I might pause here and say that uh, the importance of the energy efficiency uh, and conservation block grants uh, to get this work seated and going. It was absolutely critical for us. It allowed us to do the uh, greenhouse gas emission study. Uh, it also uh, allowed us significant investments in, in energy efficiency in our buildings. And I, I mourn the fact that uh, the federal government hasn't seen fit, that Congress hasn't seen fit, uh, I should say, to extend uh, those uh, energy efficiency uh, block grants. We're, uh, um, we, we've done some uh, well, sustainable roofs, uh, although I don't, I don't have a green roof. Uh, I love the pictures that were up here this morning of those green roofs, and we had a green roof conference in Grand Rapids uh, last week, and, and, and I'm, you know, I gotta catch up. Uh, you got green roofs, don't you? I gotta catch up with Heathy on that. So uh, there's, my, there's our next cha uh, challenge, uh, uh, Harris. Um, uh, solar, uh, we've, uh, we've put solar on our water services building. It, it generates about 25% of the power demand uh, for that building, uh, and, and that's been a, a good investment for us, as well as um, electric vehicle oh, charging are. stations uh, in our municipal parking ramps uh, and, and at some selected yeah. uh, street locations. We actually uh, charge a, a, a modest, um, uh, surplus fee for parking in those locations since we can't resell the electrical power. We charge a little bit more to park there while you're charging your car and, uh, and that's, so that's been a, uh, uh, really an economic benefit for the city as well. Looking forward, um, supporting those policy uh, proposals to increase energy efficiency and, and clean renewable energy is, is right at the heart of what uh, each and every one of us uh, in this room and certainly each and every one of us associated with municipal government has to be about. It was a very disappointing loss of the 20, 25 to 25 campaign. I know John worked hard on that, I worked hard on that, uh, and it was uh, ultimately defeated. On the other hand, it's encouraging to hear the words uh, of the governor around renewables and his, his, um, his desire to see this state move forward and in uh, this, uh, his uh, remaining year in this term and perhaps uh, through another term should he be reelected. Um, the heavy lift in Michigan is certainly with our, our state legislature uh, uh, that just isn't, isn't where we are uh, on this subject. Um, and, and of course the heavy lift in, in, in Washington DC is with Congress, uh, it's, it's not with the administration. Uh, I know that many of you in the room are close enough to members of the administration, and uh, whether it's through DOE or, or uh, w within the White House, that we know that uh, they're totally supportive, but uh, it's, it's Congress we've got to move. Uh, I'll conclude, I, I, I have the opportunity and the, the privilege of serving on the um, White House Task Force of uh, lo uh, local, state, and tribal leaders for community, or for climate prepared, for climate Preparedness and Resilience. It's the longest title <laughs> of a task force I've ever seen. But it is, uh, uh, it, the, 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 uh, there are eight governors, uh, 14 mayors, two county executives, and two tribal leaders uh, serving on a task force uh, uh, impaneled by President Obama to, to make recommendations on um, that, that, that by executive order he can accomplish that will make us more resilient communities. Certainly, 
resilient communities against climate change. Certainly, uh, energy is at the, at the forefront of that. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, Haris Alabashic uh, with me here today is uh, uh, staffing my work on that task force and was uh, appointed himself to serve as the uh, co-chair of the energy sector. Um, the alliance, uh, as we've looked at the alliance objectives, um, uh, they are built into uh, the work of that energy sector. I mean, the work that we're talking about here uh, to the extent that it can be accomplished through um, executive order rather than through legislation uh, is already uh, written into the, 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 the set of recommendations that this uh, task force will make to the president. Um, uh, the big challenge will be uh, uh, really those legislative initiatives, and, and, they're, and they're so, so critical. So let me just finish then by, uh, by saying here's some contact information uh, for, for us uh, uh, on this subject. Um, and, and just say that um, uh, Ann Arbor and Grand Rapids have, have come a, a long way uh, around energy efficiency uh, and, um, and, and the use of renewable energy, and we're, we're quite proud of that. But the fact of the matter is um, every city can do what Ann Arbor and Grand Rapids have done. It's, there's nothing uh, magical about it. Uh, it, it. It only requires persistence. It requires a vision. It requires a, a willingness to stand there against, often against strong opposition um, uh, and, and to be persistent. Uh, and, and so, you know, not only can every city do so, but every city must do so. Uh, you, you know the data as well as, well as I do. You've, you've read the projections. Uh, I'm in the midst of reading the sixth extinction right now, and, uh, and it's, it's scary stuff. Uh, this is, a, this is a, one of those wicked problems that we've got to throw our arms around. And, and the work of the Alliance, uh, the work that we're here and about today is, is critical to that. So I'm, I'm proud to have added my, my signature to the page, and, and thank you very much for the work you're doing. Thank you.